He's taking aims and kicking ass, this dog. He just does what he wants, really. Right now, he's trying to fight me. So Leo's three years old. I have a second Dutch Shepherd who's nine years old. So I raised high drive dog before, trained her in Schutzen. So thought I had some idea what I'm doing, right? Until I met him. Probably about a year ago, I was out doing obedience with him, walking him out there, doing obedience, putting him in a foosh, doing turns with him, stop, down. He decided I don't want to do it, turn and bit me. I corrected him and he redirected on me. Mm -hmm. I've continued to try to work with him, take him out, try to get him you know, to a point where he's more calm, exercise him. We do at least three to probably four to five miles a day, either at a run or walk pace, we get out there. He's great in the house, but as soon as you get out, his dog aggression, and now recently has become people aggression. Jill will tell you that she's really afraid to walk him now. She doesn't even want to walk him because she's unsure what he's going to do. And that's where we're kind of at. We had a trainer come over one day a few weeks ago. Guy said he's a former canine handler. Jill had found him. I was outside walking him thinking well I'll walk him first before this guy gets here he showed up as I'm on a walk we walk up on our front porch I sit down in a chair with Leo at my side this gentleman walks up on the porch Leo looks at him eyeballs him and then just goes at him I had him on was on a leash so I brought him back I mean the trainer was like I'm not working with the dog I won't touch that dog you need to think about putting the dog down so we're trying to find an answer for us and for him. We love the dog. We don't want to get rid of him. We, we want to be good dog owners and, and be responsible for him. But like right now, I can't take him out without a muzzle on because I don't know how he'll react to anybody. Now, I was out last Saturday. I was on a long run with him. We did like eight and a half miles. Came to a water point and there were two women and two men standing there. As I came by, the lady asked, what kind of dog is that? So I stopped and I thought, okay, opportunity. And I had a do not pet vest on him and on his leash. And she said, is he really, can you really not pet him because he's beautiful? And I said, well, you can, but I put that on there because I don't want people to approach without me knowing what they're gonna do. I said, cause he's a little unstable, we're trying to work with him. And she said, well, I have a dog that's kind of like that too. Can I pet him? And I said, if you'll do what I tell you to do, yeah. And I said, just understand when you approach, he may come out and muzzle punch you. Yeah. I said, but he's on a leash, I'll correct him and he's muzzled, he can't hurt you. And she was like, okay, I'm okay with that. And I said, will you do what I say? And she said, yes. Yeah. So she started to walk right at him with her head down looking at him. And I said, stop, back up. What I want you to do is walk towards me facing away. Don't look at him at all. Just ignore the dog, come to me stand next to me and then I'll let him see you. So she did, she walked over to me. Once we were talking, I said, okay. He walked over and he just went up and he sniffed her and he was fine and then I handed her a couple treats and she bent down and gave him two treats and he was perfectly fine with her. I wanna go outside and just go for a quick walk okay. uh, with you guys. Um, we're just gonna go around the parking lot, around the property a little bit. I always like to do that first with dogs that are high strung like this and a little nervous. I guess that's the thing Thomas and I might have said aside is, for Jill to be able to feel comfortable handling him and healing him. At what age did he start to exhibit this redirective of frustration, aggression, stranger danger? Around the two year yeah. mark, yeah. You ask 10 different people about fixing your dog, you're gonna get 13 different answers. And so for me, when working with dogs, I'm constantly you know, auditing everything that I'm doing with every session. And so that's something I have seen for sure is a correlation between intact, males between nine months to a year and a half to two year mark where they start exhibiting the, this type mm -hmm. of behavior. We kept him intact mainly because we wanted to make sure they was fully matured. So we've talked about getting him fixed. We're just trying to make the best decisions for his health for us as a family. From the amount of dogs and the behavioral things that I've seen, I, I find it to be a contrast. Usually if you opt in for healthy dogs, sometimes maybe some of the behaviors start to be unpleasant. I think it sounds like you guys are you know, really doing a lot of the right stuff. I would just say in the future, uh, I know that it's nice to be able to desensitize him and try to get him socialized with people, but the people out there that want to be social with him are the wrong people. Stop asking to pet other people's dogs. There's absolutely no benefit in it for the dog. This happens far too often. It's not your dog. Don't be selfish. Stop doing it, you guys. When you get a dog that becomes very pissed off and frustrated at certain things for whatever reason, you do have to be mindful about that redirection because what happens is, is he starts to build and build and build and then all of a sudden with the prong collar, you bang, he detonates and he gets worked up because he loads and then boom, you just pop that bubble. I always tell people like, I'd much rather have a man eater that listens to me than an out of control puppy any day of the week. So I can control my dog and I can also control other people. Can I pet you? No. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't actually. Don't even look at my dog. Don't even think about looking at my dog. So we're gonna be focused on obedience and then we're also gonna be working on how we can decrease and deactivate some of that build as it builds. If I could tell you the number of comments I heard as I walked my dog in that eight mile run of the day with his no pet vest and his muzzle on about, oh, why is that dog in a muzzle? Yeah. He has no pet, he shouldn't even be out here. I'm just like, 
Just leave us alone. Yeah. All I want to do is run by without you reaching out to touch my dog. You guys, muzzles get a bad rep and they really shouldn't. Just because a dog is wearing a muzzle doesn't mean they're aggressive and it doesn't mean that they're mean and it doesn't mean that they're gonna rip your head off. A muzzle is simply there to keep the dog and the people around safe. So stop blaming and stop making muzzles look bad, peeps. I wanna see where your obedience is at, so just work them in here. Yep. Yep. Place. 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 Lots. Good boy. Good boy. What's it, what is he motivated by? What does he like? Food. So I want to start doing is I'm going to give you a treat. You're going to give him a treat. Okay. A treat. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just starting to associate me and the presence of me and more importantly, me getting this close to him as, uh, hey, that guy means this. Now what I want to do is just hand me the leash and I want to see how he does with me. Checks in with you. Yes, good boy. Yes, good man. Him looking back tells me a couple different things. Probably more of like, oh so, God, oh God, oh God. So that tells me that the reactivity that you're seeing is primarily gonna be derivative and coming from protection slash fear. In my experience with working dogs like this, you also get this really cocky, confident thing too, is they're like, I am confidently insecure. Cause sometimes you'll get a dog that maybe isn't intact and they're like just half of it, which is just nervous. And maybe they shy away, maybe they bark a little bit. He never shies away. Right. Sit, yes. Good boy. Good, sit. See, see that little tail wag? So he's like, I want to, but I don't know. So when his anxiety looked like right now with his whining, right? He wants to go to her. Why don't you just take the leash? I think it's less about who he wants to go to. I think it's more about, Off. you ever see a golden retriever try to collect two tennis balls at once? Right. Oh yeah. That's what he's doing to you guys. He's like, I want both of you guys in my bubble. You see what I'm saying though? It's not just one or the other. Yep. It's, I want both of you guys. I want my people. Yeah. Well, it comes down to like a herding thing too. I mean, duchies are, you know, they herd. That's what they do. They're like, hey, I want you over here too. And so that's what he's doing is he needs, he needs, See? yeah. Oops. The more you work him and when he's anxious like that, the better it's gonna be. Leo has a bite history. And the very last thing that these guys wanna do is have to put their dog down. They are absolutely desperate for change and we have to start right now. Bella barked and he immediately turned and hit me. On your leg? Yep. There? Okay, I see it. So whenever you get that potential distraction, what I want to do is draw that out. Put him into a sit, pay him, you know, hold, hold his attention. So that's kind of like the game plan is we're going to be doing a multiple faceted different things here. Building confidence, doing the remote collar, as well as finding tactics and exercises to decrease the level of build so he doesn't end up boiling over. The dogs who are quiet and assassins are the dogs that mean it. If he's just wired that way, then we're gonna do everything we can to, you know, do the exercises to make him successful. So that was redirection from her, but he didn't redirect back to the handler. He redirected it whoever, at whatever was closest. Yeah. And at the moment when he did, you, was, were, yeah. you were okay, closest. Let's do that again. So is that a muzzle punch to oh, you? Oh yeah. Yeah, I wanna to switch to the 280C. It has a little bit heavier vibrate. Yep. On those little lunges, I wanna use that to discourage it. As soon as he does something that we like, Sit, yes, we pay the dog, right? So we're encouraging behavior. As soon as he does something we don't like, then we're putting some sort of consequence over that with the verbal. Yep. Leave it. Now, if any point he does this redirective stuff, I'm gonna use the pager. That would be good. So right now he's doing the same thing. Please. Right? So you're gonna come out. You're gonna turn, you're gonna tell him to heal. If he doesn't, hey, pay attention to me. And then eventually, he's gonna turn with you. That's the goal. Good, but give him a little bit more leverage on the leash. Okay, so. Where he's gonna read on me right now. Okay, here, so. let me see it. What you wanna do. Great. Oh. 
did you see that vibrate okay. that I did there? Yes. So he definitely cared about that. So this is exactly what I was talking about. That's the thing that we're like, I gotta yeah. come out. Come, you call her. Leo, come. Yes, good, come. Come. Yes, good. So I'm just using the stem on a six, good. I hope you guys are enjoying this video and any other video that you watch on my channel. We put a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears into this production just for you guys completely free because I want you guys to get better at home with your dog. All I ask of you guys is like this video, leave a comment in the comments below, and subscribe to my channel for videos like this every single week. But I want you to pay attention to you know, my body and my leash pressure. Yep. Good heel, yo. Heel. Good heel. Good heel. Leo, come. Come. Leo, sit. No. Off. Off. Sit. No, sir. Off. Off. Sit. Plots. Plots. What he's doing is he's just getting really frustrated. So you have to like work out those little kinks. He does this explosive stuff like you saw him like where he redirected at my leg, he jumped up on me. You don't want to fight him in those situations but you don't want to back out of those situations. You don't want to like let him win that. Now just heal him around. Just practice your healing. Good. Leave it. Tell him to leave it off. Sit. Good sit. Good. So I think that that's part of some of the grindstone that you have to go through, unfortunately, with him is because he's so used to doing things like that and then you ending the session. Good. Off. 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 Here, let me see him. Heel. So this is like what we have to work on the most is that little explosive. What it really is is him being dominant. 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 Dominance. Dominant. Something that's thrown around a lot in the dog training industry. I work with thousands of dogs, specifically with behavioral problems, and I very, very rarely, one out of a hundred maybe, will see a dog that's actually dominant. In Leo's case, it's a great example of dominance. He's an intact working dog that really doesn't like being told what to do when you ask him to do it. Now, a lot of times people will say, my dog doesn't come back, they're dominant. My dog won't sit, they're dominant. My dog won't get off the couch, they're dominant. That's really not dominance. This is a true case of not only do I not do what you want me to do, but I'm gonna fight you until you stop asking me to do it. Leo is a perfect case of a true dominant dog. When he doesn't wanna do something, he gives you the eyes, he gives, he gets, Plots. Plots. Off. Off. No. 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 So he, right now he's trying to fight me. To see his eyes, he's trying to hit me as hard as he can to get what he wants. He wants to hit me like that. No. So it's not necessarily like, I don't want to do something. That's not dominance. It's, if you don't let me do something, I will fight you. Normally dogs will redirect because of correction. I think he's redirecting because every time I, he tries to go and do something and I don't let him, he gets pissed. Off. 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 Every time I get close to something he wants, it's, we worked on it yesterday inside but it's, it's intensified out, outside. So you can't really correct them for it because it makes it worse, like I said. The only thing I'm doing is I'm just using the pager. The prong color has nothing to do with it at this point because I'm not correcting him with that either. I'm just holding him off me with it. Come. Good boy. Good job. For those of you at home, everyone always talks about like tail wagging and stuff. That little tail wag was a very malicious tail wag. He was like really ready to fire off. So everyone thinks, but his tail's wagging. That doesn't matter. I've seen dogs kill other dogs with their tail wagging. You can indicate on it and what it means, but that dominant straight up in the air, this is very like fluttering, like, yeah. So what do we do from here? Instead of going against the grain, say, okay, this is the dog we have. These are the things we need to do to make this dog's quality of life excellent. 
as well as being realistic and fair to the community that we live in, the dog that we're working with, and of course, the owners as well. So sometimes my job, I have to deliver the owners the news that they really don't want to hear. And in Leo's case, he's a hardwired, intact, working line Dutch Shepherd that really would rather be working out in the field than be a pet walking in the neighborhood. So it sucks, but that's the reality. We're not going to beat around the bush and keep saying, let's just try this to not get the dog frustrated. This dog is always going to become frustrated and have a short fuse. It's my job to explain to them the things that they need to do to be successful in the future, as well as be honest with them and say, hey, this dog is not going to change and be the polite walking dog that's not going to get frustrated in the neighborhood. Your big goal, right, collectively, is to get you more confident with working with him. Like I said before, he may not just be safe for anybody to go out and handle him other than you. Yeah. Let's change gears a little bit and see what we can do to continue the relationship. So at least you're not afraid of him and you don't feel like you're disconnected with him and you don't feel confident with him. I think it's just when he gets out into scenarios, there's just I'd rather not fight this dog, you know? So what I want to do is I want to do short little obedient sessions with him. Uh, maybe like, you know, 10 reps, 15 reps, put him back, do it again. So it's important really with any dog to give the dog breaks. But with Leo, because of his frustration and his threshold and the very short fuse that he has, we are really breaking down the sessions to like 10 minutes, 10 minutes of work back into the crate, 15 minutes of work back into the crate. That way when they go home, they can incrementally build the thresholds out for longer periods of time. He didn't commit there. Even when he pulled back though, he was pissed, but he didn't hit you with it. Watch his tail. It, his mind is connected to his tail like none other. So like as soon as he starts thinking something different, his tail displays that immediately. See, it's kind of cool. All right, now you walk with him this way and then drop back and recall. Like some sort of like quarter, quarterback move. Drop back and call him. Leo, come. Come. Good. Like when he comes out and he rounds here, he's kind of like, like this. <laughs> It's like what he does is he like, he eyes him. And he, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very interesting. Call him again. And I think what it is, is it wasn't any of the dogs in particular. He just wanted to go and do something. And we're like, hey, come back. And he's like, mm, I, I think it's good information because we're starting to see that he, all of this is just predicated off of frustration. And it was very interesting, very interesting. There's a fight. I gotta go. Back legs, back legs, back legs. Okay, fun's over. The big dog caught his tooth on Maverick's leash or on his thing, yeah. They were just stuck. That's why, like Brittany was saying, our daycare girl, she was just saying like, it doesn't happen often, but once it does, because all the other dogs think they're fighting. So you get these these two dogs that are like sitting there like the Airedale Terrier grabbed one of the other dogs and was trying to rip them off the other dog. It was like this whole, everyone's fine, it's good. I am always a student and I try to learn every single day. So one thing that I did is I called one of my friends, forced Mickey, who is a great trainer and a great friend. And I asked him his opinion because he works with a lot of working dogs, Dutchies and Malinois. And he gave me really good advice on scatter feeding. So scatter feeding is essentially a technique that you do exactly how it sounds. You take food, you take treats, and you scatter it on the ground. What this does is it immediately puts a dog into a food drive or a hunt drive to look for the food or the treats on the ground. This ultimately will put the dog on the food instead of whatever is around them. So when we're working with reactive or aggressive dogs, our goal is to always modify the perception of why the dog is reactive in the first place. Corrections will make this dog amplify and get more frustrated and actually make the dog hit you harder. So what we're doing is we're scattering that food off right on the right time to make sure we're deactivating the build on the frustration. You want him to watch you. Yeah. Take it. Leo, sit. Good sit. Food. Just like that. Nice, perfect, good. It's good that he's searching. Come, that come. that drive is sit. Food. Good, nice. Oh, officially, he likes food better than you. I had one of my other trainers bring out another dog to put Leo's owner really to the test. Now, if this doesn't go good, I'm afraid she's going to lose confidence altogether and never want to pick up the leash with Leo again. Food. Good. Leo, come, 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 come. Nice, in the future, you don't have to do it now, but you could also wait for him to lock on and then food. That will re-compass how the things work. So instead of locking on frustration, 
locking on food. Julie, you want to get a little bit closer? Food. Yes, oh, buddy. Good. 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 But you can almost use a charge like this too. Just get a little bit closer. I just want to show you, like charge. Good. Good. Charge. 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 Frustrate him a little bit. Agitation. Mm -hmm. Food. Oh. Boom. Yep. We talk about protection work when we do agitation and they hit the, they hit it harder. That's what you're doing. Yep. Right there. So build them. It's okay. Draw back. Draw back. Food. Food. Pay. 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 Don't. Don't. In that situation, you just food him. It was good. It was good. And he, he didn't redirect. So Leo did actually react to this dog, which wasn't a surprise. But what actually happened is Leo's owner did exactly what we've been practicing, reeled the dog in, got the focus, scatter fed, and diffused the frustration without any reactivity for the first time. I'm really proud of Leo and his owners for putting in the work and being creative and being really patient with Leo to try to figure out what really works for him. Hang out right there, just hang out right there. Keep him right there. We're just like testing his drives. Like see how much he cares more about the search than he does the other dogs. So in a situation like this where you want to test it a little bit more, Leo. Good, sit, good sit, good sit. And then get a little bit closer, charge. Good, charge, food. Good boy. Where I see failure is doing it too much. When you're out with him and there's another dog, you'll be doing it. And I would encourage you to, to try to, to do it periodically as you're walking. Like right now, we wouldn't do it, right. right? But maybe when there's another dog or another person present, we'll do it. So just don't overdo it. Fast him, fast him, and use the kibble just so he's charged up, ready to go. Like I said before, we're not gonna change him to getting frustrated. But what we figured out is why it's happening, what triggers there are, and how to get him out of it. My wife was able to find Tom's videos online. Some of the aggressive dogs that he worked with were exactly what we see in Leo. And his attitude about it being no bad dogs and saying, hey, I don't give up on dogs. I don't work with puppies. I work with dogs that are problems. Led us to make a phone call. I sent an email out and said, hey, this is what we have. What could we think about coming out? Jill and I are like, let's do it. Let's load up the camper. Let's head out there. And we spent three days. You know, my big concern is I can handle the dog if he goes off, but my wife is much smaller. Could she handle him? And it was really about her building confidence. Just today, as we're getting ready to leave, the confidence watching Jill work with Leo with another dog right next to him. Even when he responded to that dog, she now knew what to do to correct him and bring him down is huge. So he didn't leave us without an answer. And his answer was, you're not going to change Leo. You need to understand to change your parameters to work within who Leo is. He showed us what those were and methods to work with Leo where we can keep him safe and keep ourselves safe. And most importantly to us, to keep our dog. We love that dog. I want to be able to keep him in a home where he's healthy. He's able to live and have a happy life and we're able to work with him.